What's up, everybody? Byron Metcalf, ESPN College Basketball reporter, uh, TV reporter, radio host, joined by the great Jeff Borzello, ESPN college reporter, college basketball reporter, uh, recruiting analyst. Uh, and here we are to talk about, of course, the 2023 NCAA tournament. This is the ESPN YouTube bracket show. And we're going to run through our brackets and try to help you out. I know what you're thinking. How do I fill out this bracket? Jeff and I have your back. Trust us. So we're going to start, Jeff, I think in the South region. Uh, and we're just going to kind of walk people through what they should do. Now, we can't make any guarantees here, right? Like, we're going to do our best. But, you know, maybe, I maybe you say, can. Jeff. Maybe you can. <laughs> well, I would say, Jeff, if, if your bracket is terrible, off of my advice, it's on you. But if you succeed, I take full credit. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For I like that. Yeah. All right. It seems reasonable. So let's run through this and let's start through the South region. All right, Bozella, I'm going to start here, uh, run through the, the South region, which I think a lot of people are overlooking. I mean, I think people are acting like Alabama has a just an easy path, and I don't buy that. Uh, but Alabama is going to win their first game, whether that's against uh, Texas Stadium, Corpus Christi, or SEMO. They're going to advance there. Uh, and then Maryland, West Virginia, you know, if you told me that game was in Morgantown, I'd pick West Virginia. Also, Maryland hasn't played well on the road. I'll take Maryland here, though. I think they're just a better team. I think Maryland advances. San Diego State, Charleston, obviously the sexy upset pick is Charleston. Matt Brown is hitting shots, um, and they're playing a lot better than they were earlier in the season. Mm -hmm. Give me San Diego State to advance. Uh, Virginia Furman, I think Furman's a good team, Jeff, but I don't think they're good enough to beat uh, you know, the, the experience of uh, Virginia. And I've got some firm and takes, but, but I, it's not my <laughs> turn yet, but I got some firm and takes. Hey, listen, I, that could be competitive, but I just, I, I'm not ready to go there yet. I'm going to pick Virginia to advance in that game. You know, to me, Creighton, NC State, NC State obviously has some NBA talent. And like, this is one of those moments where I feel like that becomes a factor in a bracket where I don't think mm -hmm. we have a great team. Uh, uh, Creighton had that really rough stretch, and then they started playing a lot better. I think NC State is real, man. I, I just think this is one of those games where you, you got a couple of players, Jeff, who might just kind of overwhelm Creighton uh, with that NC State backcourt. Jarkel Joyner to Quavion Smith. I mean, they're – yeah. They, you know, they're, they're sometimes the two best players on the court whenever they step on it. But, you know, I guess we'll see who I pick. But I, I don't disagree with your NC State pick. I that, That's one I went back and forth on a bunch. It's, yeah, it's, it's going to be that, – that was a hard one there. Hey, shout out to the UC Santa Barbara Gauchos. Uh, Joe Pashnak, I think, has averaged 22 wins uh, a, a game. I mean, 22 wins a yep. year since taking over. But I think Baylor's like, tournaments, yeah. Yeah, like Baylor's as a three – my goodness, who wants Baylor as a three? Uh, they're tough, and I think they're being overlooked. Give me Baylor to advance there. Uh, Dennis Gates, I don't know how he was not named co-SEC coach of the year. Like, if you don't give it to Jerry Stackhouse, you know, and, and you're going to give who, it. Who got it? Who got coach of the year in the SEC? Uh, they gave it to Jerry Stackhouse, uh, okay. and then they gave it to uh, – uh, Texas A&M's coach. Why can't I think of his name? My brain yeah, is Buzz Williams. Buzz Williams. Buzz Williams. Buzz Williams. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Buzz and Jerry shared it. I feel like uh, if you're going to give two guys the award, Dennis Gates should have been in there. But that's, Dennis that's Gates tough, is going to lead this team. I mean, he got an extension. He's got a, like $30 million guaranteed coming oh, yeah. in the next few years. I think that's a pretty good consolation. <laughs> consolation yeah, part. yeah. I don't. I didn't see him complaining at all <laughs> about anything. It's how, it, it seemed like, it, you know, he's happy. But I think Missouri advances. I love Kobe Brown in his game. Um, they showed up in some some big moments. So the, I don't think Utah State's an easy game. Arizona advances clearly. Uh, again, I, I don't know why people act like Alabama has this easy path. Alabama will beat Maryland because Maryland will finally realize it's not playing at home, and then they'll go back to being that Maryland. The San Diego Virginia game. I've been going. That's going to be forth. in the fifties. That's going to be in the fifties, man. So if you tell me it's a it's a low scoring game. And somebody's got to make a play down the stretch. Who do I trust? Give me, give me Reese Beekman and company. Give me Virginia uh, to, to advance there. Now you got this NC State Baylor game. 
I, I think this is Keontae George's moment. Give me Baylor to advance there over NC State. I They've think got Missouri the guards put, to match those NC State guards. They do. And, and again, I think it's also one of those moments where when you have a coach who's done this at the highest level, yep. who, who, who's yep. gotten there, that matters. And I think the other thing people forget when it comes to coaching, Jeff, is like these veteran coaches, it's not that first game. It's that second game. Like you're giving mm-hmm. Izzo that and quick, Bill that Self quick and those turnaround, dudes. a 36 hour turnaround. Yeah. Yeah. That's why Izzo's been so great. Like that dude versus your head coach with 36 mm-hmm. hours is going to be more prepared. And I think, you know, that'll, that'll certainly be the case with Baylor. Give me Arizona to advance over Missouri. Uh, although I think that could be competitive as well. Alabama beats Virginia. I mean, Alabama is not going to let Virginia kind of slow that pace down. Uh, they can do what they want. Baylor, Arizona is interesting to me. And I think the way Arizona played against UCLA in the Pac-12 tournament championship game opened up some eyes, huh? But I don't know, man. I, I, I guess I have to believe that Arizona and just what they can do with their size will be the difference in that game. Right? Does that this make sense? Chalky, I mean, I think- this, is a, this is a chalky bracket you've got going <laughs> on here. <laughs> listen, man. It, it, listen, we can we – can, do all the upsets, you know. You can do that. I, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna blow up this region when it's my turn. Don't worry. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to keep my money or make more. You know, that's the goal <laughs> there. I'm not trying to lose it. What's the point of that? All right, now you got Alabama, Arizona. So this to me is where the toll of everything that's transpired this year with Alabama and the scrutiny with Brandon Miller. Where you know what? You can protect Brandon Miller during the SEC season. In the NCAA tournament, it's open locker rooms. It's like the NBA. Like, you you don't get to kind of keep him away from, from this these questions. You don't get to keep the players away from these questions. Yep. And I think this is when it starts to add up to an Alabama team that, as much as it says it's focused, Jeff, I don't think mm-hmm. you can be. At some point, it catches up to you. Give me Arizona to beat Alabama in that game. And I, I take back everything I said about the chalky bracket. I'm going to – well, first, I'm going to pick the playing game, and I'm going to pick A&M, Corpus Christi to win that. But then Alabama's going to beat them either way, so it doesn't matter. Okay. I'm going to go West Virginia. Like you said, neither team very good away from home. I just think West Virginia a little tougher. Um, and Maryland has been really bad away from home. So I just yeah. think picking kind of the the better of two uh, to bad performers there. Um, I li- I'm with you. I'm with us. I got like San Diego State. Charleston seems to be everyone's darling. I just think San Diego State makes that kind of a grind. And I'm not sure Charleston will be able to play um, in the half court with San Diego State for for 40 minutes. I'm going Furman over Virginia. Um, Ooh, yeah, Jalen Slauson, Mike Bothwell. I just I, I like, like Slauson. Yeah, I mean they can make shots. They're really good offensively. I think the key is going to be getting out to a hot start. Uh, one coach that played Furman said if if they get out of the lead on you, they're really hard to come back on. And Virginia, with the way they play, they're not built to kind of you know score a lot of points really quickly. So I'm going Furman there. Um, I do. I went back and forth on Creighton, NC State. I'm taking Creighton though. Um, really good defensively. I think they're going to kind of make life difficult for Smith and Joiner. And um, you know, NC State's had some real. I mean, most of them have come against Clemson, but they've had some real g- games where they've just completely disappeared offensively. Um, yeah. I'll go Baylor. I think that one's going to be close though. Baylor, Santa Barbara's going to be close, but I'll go Baylor. I'll take Missouri, and then I'll take Arizona. Um, and then I'm going to go Alabama to cruise past West Virginia. Now. You say it's not a cakewalk to the Final Four for Alabama, and I agree with you. I do think they probably have the easiest path of any one seed, though. Where do you they stand do. on that? I'm with you. But, like, that's a different conversation. They've got the easiest path, but I think people are sort of just assuming this is going to be easy. Yeah. I also think there's not a strong history of teams led by one-and-done talent getting to the Final Four in the national championship. And then this off-court stuff, it's never happened yeah. before. We've never seen like this. So how do they handle that? You know, I, I think, I mean, toward the end of the regular season, I was with you. I mean, Alabama would have been my pick if you asked me to win it all. If you asked me six weeks ago. And then when they had the off court stuff, they seemed to those final four games of the regular season, they were not the same team. And I was kind of off the bandwagon and then they seemed to turn it back on in SEC tournament play. Um, so I think I'm, I'm, I have faith in the Crimson Tide again, but we'll see if I pick them to win it all. Um, I'm going Furman, Sweet 16. 13 seed in the Sweet 16. Wow. Um, yeah, kind of the same story as, as the game against Virginia. I think they'll be able to score. Um, you know, neither Virginia nor San Diego State is overly explosive offensively. 
Furman's not a great defensive team. They can go through kind of lulls offensively uh, where they're not making shots, which you know is really tough against elite defensive teams like Virginia and San Diego State. But I just think they have two stars. They're making shots. Um, and, hey, someone's got to pick an upset. Uh, hey, and then you. I do like I do like Baylor. I mean, I, I but I'm picking Creighton. I am picking Creighton. I, I like Baylor. I just – their defense is really bad. I mean, over yeah. the last month or so, they've completely fallen apart at that end of the floor. I love their guards. I just – Creighton can guard. Creighton's got a legit big man in Kalkbrenner. Baylor has, has struggled inside. Um, and I just – I don't know. I like the way – I saw them in person at the Big East tournament last week. I've seen them a couple times in person this season. I just think they have that two-way ability at both ends of the floor to to take down Baylor. I'm going to go Arizona over Missouri. Uh, you know, that's going to be a high-scoring game. Like if you want to see points, that's going to yeah. be a fun game to watch. Um, Alabama over Furman. I think Furman's uh, clock hits it's midnight over. or whatever the Cinderella, Cinderella <laughs> it, it's phrase over for is, Furman. It is. It's yeah, over it's for them after the pal- that. Yeah. The, the, the Paladins are going home. <laughs> um, and, I'm taking, and I'm taking Arizona over Creighton. And I think Alabama-Arizona might be – the best game, or at least the most entertaining game, uh, we'll see all tournament. I mean, both teams want to play in the 80s, 85, 90 points. So if you want to see a great game back and forth, high-level offensive play, that's the game to see. But I'm going to go Alabama. Um, you know, Arizona, I like them a lot. It's just – they. I do think beating UCLA opened some eyes, but also that was a UCLA team that was down two guys. They had their big men foul out, and that still went down to the wire. UCLA had that game in the bag for about 37 minutes. All right, now we're going to the Midwest. I, I mean, I was with Marcus Sasser in Houston. Uh, I talked to him before that loss to Memphis, where Memphis just steamrolled them in the AAC tournament title game. Uh, he went through all the warm-ups, all the drills. You know, I saw him at shoot-around. So, I, I think he'll play. You know, I think he could have played. He just didn't want to risk it. So, if you tell me that Houston's healthy, Houston advances, you know, I'm, I'm not off the Houston train because of what happened with Marcus Sasser. Um you know what? I, I saw Iowa against Indiana a couple of weeks ago. And Chris Murray, to me, is one of the more underrated players in, in the field. He's a real matchup quagmire, yep. I, I think. Give me Iowa to advance over Auburn. Auburn playing in Birmingham, by the way. Ridiculous. Oh, man. How about that? They're going to have a great crowd. There are injury issues for Miami. and I, I just haven't been on the Miami train. Like, I just mm. – I, I think it's – a lot of their success is relative to what the ACC has been this year. Drake gets the upset there, beats Miami in the opening round. There you go, twelve over five, classic. Drake it Drake advances there. Uh, Kent State. A lot of people talking about Kent State, but Trace Jackson Davis against teams like that is a monster. Give me Indiana to advance over Kent State. Like Iowa State, I gave I did these star ratings in my sixty eighteen preview. And I gave Iowa State three stars, right? It's a five-star system. And there were fans who were like, look at their record. How could you give them three stars? They've been terrible for like a month. Like they haven't been yes. a good team. So I think anything could happen. So if you tell me they got to either play Mississippi State or Pitt uh, in that opening round, give me the winner of uh, either one of those teams. Iowa State loses. Dude, uh, Iowa State and Mississippi State might, might be the worst game of the yeah. tournament if they play. I mean, that's going to be like 43 to two. I mean, 43 to 42. It's going to be rough. It's, it's going to be ugly. Uh, I think Pitt, though, advances, and I think Pitt gets that win. Xavier, to me, if you're Sean Miller, you're like, oh, we're three in this region. Nobody's really talking about us. Kobe Jones has been amazing. Jerome Hunter now uh, in, in the lineup with Zach Fremantle hurt. Like, Sule Boom. Like, they are grown men, man. They got grown men on that team, man. They are tough. They're physical. I don't know. I, I, I like them. Sean Miller. He's uh, he's completely changed his coaching kind of DNA. Um, yeah. At Arizona, it was defense first. It was you know pack line defense, and now it's like we're going to run up and down. We're going to score more points than you. And and you know he seems happier, and and Xavier's been better for it. He he's he's ready to overwhelm you, whoever you are. And I think with that team as well, there's a history of teams that win the NIT and get to the tournament the following year, and that helps them. And I think it'll help uh, Xavier for sure after winning last year's NIT. Uh, Listen, man, Penn State is is real to me. Like they 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 have a guy in Pickett who to me they like shoot they can shoot. You know they they're tough, but give me A and M to advance there in that game. Texas, Rodney Terry's oh, way, A&M, one way or the other. A and M is a A and M is a seven seed. Whew. That's 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 a that's something, right? That's a choice. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous that the committee that the committee made. 
Uh, Houston Buzz Williams Iowa. and his Buzz, Buzz Williams and his dossiers and his packets of paper from last year's <laughs> press conference when they didn't get in. They remembered. Yeah, now they're now they're punishing them. Yeah, they Indiana are. beats <laughs> Indiana beats Drake. Xavier advances. Texas advances. You know, Roddy Terry's about to get paid one way or the other, man. I'm I'm happy for yes, him. He is. Uh, you, you really could not have scripted a better interim moment uh, after everything that happened with Chris. And Beard, you can tell who, the play, the players love playing for him. It seems. Yes, and uh, Chris Beard didn't have to wait long to get another job. <laughs> Welcome to college basketball. Uh, <laughs> uh, give me, give me Houston to advance over Indiana. Give me Xavier over Texas. I love Houston, man, and and I love the story of, you know. Uh, Houston could be the first team ever in NCAA history to host the Final Four and participate in it. Now, people will say Butler did it, right? I was going to say, but, yeah, yeah. But Butler wasn't the whole school when they played in the Final Four in Indianapolis. So that's the difference between the two. Houston can become okay. the first school to host and play in the Final Four. I love everything they do. I think Xavier is the most underrated team in America. I think they can beat anybody. And Xavier's going to advance in year one for Sean Miller over Houston. All right, I'm going to go Houston over Northern Kentucky. Like you, I'm going to go Iowa in the backyard of Auburn. Uh, but yeah. I'm thinking it's, I'm going to take Iowa. So Miami Drake, if North Shadow Mir is healthy, I'm going to take Miami, and that's so I'm going to that's who I'm picking in my bracket. But if he's not playing, if he's not 100, percent Drake with Tucker DeVries, I mean, they, he, yeah. he he's the type of player that can have like 37 in the first round and become kind of the headline of the tournament, but I'm going to take Miami there. I'm going to go Kent State over Indiana. Uh, I think Kent State is just tough. Uh, Sincere Carey is, is a really, really good scoring guard. Malik Malik Jacobs can kind of at least slow down Jalen hood Shafino. Now, Trace Jackson Davis is going to get his, but I'm going to take Kent State there. I'm going to take Iowa State over either of those teams. I mean, that's going to be a gross game either way, but I'm going to go Iowa State. They're used to the <laughs> kind of muck it up, half court, score 47 points type of thing. Um, I'm going to go Xavier, and then I'm going to go Penn State over A&M. Uh, you know, I just like the way Penn State's been playing. And the way to beat Penn State is to make threes and and stop them from making threes. And AM doesn't shoot threes. They're also yeah. gonna let you take open shots. Um, if Penn State could avoid fouling and getting AM to the free throw line, because that's where Wade Taylor kind of makes it makes his living. I think Penn State's gonna advance. And I'm gonna take Texas over Colgate. That's gonna be a fun game, though. Because Colgate's been competitive in a couple of straight tournaments now where they get off to an early lead and then they kind of fade yes. in the second half. But that should be interesting. Uh, I'm gonna fun go fact on Colgate Iowa. quick. Fun what fact on Colgate, which I didn't learn until I did the 618 preview. You know, that's actually named after the toothpaste guy, right? Is it the really? School is, the school I, is actually – I don't believe the toothpaste you. guy. The, 100, the toothpaste family, the Colgate family, donated a bunch of money to that school in the 1800s, and they changed the name in honor of the Colgate family. So it's actually huh. named after the toothpaste guy. This is what happens when you write 68 blurbs for the, <laughs> for the tournament like you did. You find all these fun facts. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I'm going to go Miami to beat Kent State. Uh, I mean, they, they got shot makers. Isaiah Wong is, a, is an elite guard shot maker. He's going to be fine. I'll go Xavier yeah. over Iowa State. Uh, and then I'm going to go Texas to end Penn State's little run at the end of the season. I'm going to go Houston over Miami. And that's kind of where Marcus Sasser's health is going to be interesting. I think yeah. they can get past the first weekend with or without him. Can they beat Miami without him? I don't know. But I'm going to take them. And I'm going to go Texas over Xavier. Um, you know, I just – Texas, they finished the season really strong. I mean, they, they, they seem to enjoy playing with each other. They seem to enjoy playing for Rodney Terry. Um, and I just – they got the toughness. They have experience. And Xavier can go through – I mean, that, I saw them in person against DePaul last week, and that was, you know, uh, they were horrendous defensively. They couldn't stop them whatsoever. So I think Texas will be able to get points. And I'm going to go Houston to advance to the Final Four. Yeah, Texas Southern will win the first four game. Uh, they lose to Purdue. Man, I just saw Memphis all week at the AAC tournament. Like, I've seen really fast players in person. John Wall comes to mind, De'Aaron Fox. Man, that, like, little eight feet from, like, here to there, Kendrick Davis might be the fastest one I've ever seen. Like, the way – it's like Tyreek Hill. He's different. He's different. Yeah, it's like yeah. Tyreek Hill with a basketball. Um, yeah. Like, that's who he is, man. So, yeah, Memphis definitely advances there over a good Florida Atlantic team. Um, Duke beats Oral Roberts, although, you know, that's not going to be easy. Man, Tennessee just hasn't impressed, and their offense is just so limited. You lose Ziegler, uh, but I think they beat Louisiana. 
Everyone's worried about this Kentucky Providence game. Like, I just think this is Bryce not Hopkins an Ed Cooley revenge team. game. Bryce Hopkins yeah, but, revenge game. But this isn't that Ed Cooley team. Like Ed Cooley's teams have a DNA. They're not playing well right now. They're not playing well you know, right now. This isn't that group. Give me Kentucky to to beat them. Marquise Noel, people, people, um, Deontay Johnson, like people maybe remember them from earlier in the season, maybe Kansas in the upset. Man, those dudes are tough, man. Give me K-State to advance there. Uh, and then give me, uh, man, you, I, I've done a lot of Michigan State games. I don't think they're that good. Izzo knows they're not that good. <laughs> But USC isn't that good. I was gonna say, so is, to, how good is USC? <laughs> so, so, so if it's between the like not very good teams, give me Michigan State uh, in the NCAA tournament. Everyone knows Marquette and Shaka Smart. Give me Marquette to advance there. You know what? Teams have a hard time speeding Purdue up. You know, if Purdue plays at the pace that they want to play. Could Memphis speed that team up? Could Could DeAndre Williams and those athletes just really attack? Get Zach Eady in some early foul trouble. And then force those shaky Purdue guards to, to help you advance in the second weekend. Memphis is playing so well right now. Purdue goes down. Kendrick Davis advances to the Sweet 16. That's They're going to control the pace and the tempo. Kyle Filipowski, Filipowski overwhelms Tennessee. Uh, mm -hmm. So Duke advances there. You know, there's a part of it's like, could Cal figure it out with this team? Maybe. But it just, it feels like. It feels like they, they, they – I feel like we have this debate every week on yeah. Kentucky. Oh, they're figuring it out, and then they, they lay an egg, and it's like, all right, maybe, maybe they stink. It feels like everybody attached to that program wants to be done. Like, it, it just feels like everybody's like, let's just get to this offseason because this is a mess, man. I don't see them having – you talk about Texas loving to play together. I don't see any of that with Kentucky. Like, there haven't been any moments where you're like, oh, those dudes really love each other, and they really love playing for Cal. So give me Kansas <laughs> State. Because we all know they love playing for Jerome Tang. Yeah, they you know do. they're going to show up. Marquette beats Michigan State. Um, I think Marquette might win that game by fifteen or more. You know, yeah, like it just might be one Would of agree. those games. Memphis, well, Duke. It's been, it's been a while since Shaka won a tournament game, though. It has, but I mean, this is a whole redemption year for him. Yeah, they got Mem an edge. M Memphis, Duke. Like to me, Memphis could overwhelm you, but if they can't. In that moment, you kind of punch back. They're a different team. I mean, Houston did yeah. that in the first two games. Uh, and I think Duke is ready for that. Winning the ACC tournament, this is not the same Duke team. Those mm -hmm. young guys are basically sophomores now. Duke advances there. Shire has that confidence. K-State, Marquette. I got to go with Jerome Tang and those boys, man. I just think if you can beat Kansas, you're not intimidated by anybody. Uh, Marquette's tough. But I, I think Kansas State will advance there. Duke K-State between the two. Give me Duke to advance. Uh, Kyle Filipowski and company. I think John Shire gets to the Final Four uh, in year one as a head coach. I, I take back everything I ever said about you having a chalky breath. You have not had <laughs> one single one seed in it. We, I'm, I take it all back. Uh, I'm going to go Purdue over FDU. Um, it's, and then I'll go Memphis over FAU. It feels – feels rough to have FAU as a nine seed. I mean, they should have been like a seven. They had an incredible yeah. year, but they should, they should be back. If those guys don't hit the portal, if Dusty May stays, they're going to be a top 25 team again next year. I'll go Duke over Oral Roberts. Uh, tough way for Max Aismas to go out. I wish they played like any other five seed. Um, I'll go Tennessee over Louisiana. I'll go Kentucky over Providence. I'm with you. I mean, like, Providence is not really playing that well right now, and I think Kentucky will figure it out. Uh, Kansas State over Montana State. Michigan State over USC. And then I'll go Marquette over Vermont. That might be as chalky as I've gotten. Yeah, straight down the yeah. list. Um, I'm with you. I'm going Memphis over Purdue. Um, Braden Smith and Fletcher Lawyer. I mean, they they just they they struggle against pressure. I mean, look at literally any game down the stretch of the season, last five games, when teams press them late in the game, they seem to forget how to play basketball. And yeah. Memphis, I think, is going to pressure them from the jump. And I I just think they're going to you know create havoc for those Purdue guards now. Can they stop Edie from getting, you know, 35 and 20? I don't know. But, you know, teams have let Edie get his and say, all right, he's going to get his 30. Who else is going to score for you? And, you know, Purdue has failed at times to, to have guys make shots. Uh, I'm going to go Duke over Tennessee. Tennessee's just not the same team without Zakai Ziegler. 
Uh, I'm going to go Kentucky over Kansas State. I think the difference is going to be Kansas State, worst defensive rebounding team in the Big 12. Kentucky, mm. the second best offensive rebounding team in the country, led by one Oscar Shibwe. But that worries me a little bit because what you said about they don't seem to enjoy playing with each other, that concerns me. Um, I'm going to go Marquette over Michigan State. I just love the way Marquette's playing. Um, I was at the Big East tournament. And I just, you know, they have an edge about them. I think Shaka has kind of had this siege mentality, this us against the world type thing since the preseason when they were picked ninth in the Big East. And I just like the way they're playing. I'm going to go Duke over Memphis. I think Jeremy Roach will be able to handle that pressure. And I, I don't know if Memphis has an answer for Kyle Filipowski. And then I'm going to go Marquette over Kentucky, setting up a Marquette-Duke battle. I'm going to go Marquette in the Final Four. I just think they're going to keep their winning ways rolling. Ooh. They they, go, they they defended in the Big East tournament like they have not all season. I mean, against UConn, yeah. completely took Jordan Hawkins out of the game. And then against Xavier in the title game. Oh, if, yeah. if, you, if you look at like Ken Palm and the metrics, predictive metrics, Kansas is like the fourth favorite in this in this region. I mean, this region is loaded. It, it, it's like, hey, here's your reward for uh, setting the record for the most quad one wins ever. Uh, we're going to give you the worst. Not, not only are not only are they not in the Kansas City region, they are in they are out <laughs> west in the d- most difficult region possible. I mean, this is it's brutal. And and the West, if they get to the Elite Eight, they have to play Gonzaga yeah. or UCLA in a kind of a a much more friendly West Coast environment <laughs> for those teams. Dude, the Gonzaga fans didn't even leave after the WCC tournament. They're just going to stay. They're just hanging out. They're just hey, going to hang out. I mean, there's there's then, worse man. places to stay than in there Vegas. Are. There are. Uh, Kansas beats Howard. Kudos to Kitty Blakeney, what they've been able to do. Um, Illinois has just been – I've seen them a bunch. You know, Matthew My- Meyer had a – like he missed practice with like a caffeine – Thing. Yeah, like yeah, he, like, he said he had like five Bulls. monsters. Yeah, he had like five monsters or something like that. There's a lot going yeah. on. I've watched Brad Underwood up close a lot. And I wonder if kind of in these moments, it's like a bit too much for everybody, you, you know, like when you're supposed to respond. And I think Arkansas, they've had a tough go. They're in a tough league. Uh, but I think Arkansas gets the edge against Illinois. I'm picking them to win and advance yeah. there. St. Mary's uh, has been a really good team. All year, uh, more than just sort of Gonzaga's little brother, St. Mary's advances. I'm sure they'll love that you my... called them Gonzaga's little brother, by the way. No, I said they're not that. I mean, they're <laughs> not that. Definitely not. Don't hold that against me, uh, St. Mary's fans. You're not that. You are legit, and that's what I meant. Um, my little rating system, like who cares about it? But I pay, I meant UConn a five-star because I think regardless of seed, if you tell me about ceiling, I think UConn's ceiling is as high as any ceiling in this whole tournament, UConn advances uh, over Rick Pitino before Rick Pitino joins uh, St. John's or wherever he's going to end up. Uh, man, Mike Miles Jr. is back, but he ain't mm-hmm. back back. And that concerns me, but I'm still going to pick TCU here. Um, man, Northwest has been an incredible story. I mean, you lose Pete Nance to North Carolina, you figure it's all over for those guys. That they are back in the tournament for the second time ever. Northwestern advances. I'm sorry, miss Gonzaga. Gonzaga advances there. I'm sorry. Over over Grand Canyon. Hey, Ray Harrison played great. Bryce Drew, his third team. He's leading the team yeah. tournament. I mean, that's fairly impressive. Um, Gonzaga in the same team, but they're obviously good enough to make a run in the Final Four. UCLA, uh, my guy Drew Pember is really good at UNC Asheville, but UCLA advances. I think the Jalen Clark uh, news catches up with them a little later. Kansas beats Arkansas. We still don't know what Bill Self's full, you know, duties and responsibilities. Yeah, I mean, all, all, all he said was he's going to rejoin the team. He's excited to rejoin the team. So I assume he'll be on the sideline. But, but yeah, like what know. is that? We've never seen something like this where uh, someone no. had a heart-related procedure and mm-hmm. now they're back in the NCAA tournament, which is the most stressful environment ever. So I hope Bill Self is healthy. Uh, we'll see how that works out. UConn beat St. Mary's. I like UConn a lot. Uh, you'll see that throughout this. Gonzaga beats yeah. TCU. Although I just don't trust their guard play. It Like, that's going to catch up to them at some point. I love UCLA. I mean, I, I did a piece about Jaime Hikes Jr. And, and the family. and uh, But this is where they lose. I didn't pick them. This is where they oh, lose. This, oh, this is oh. where the Northwestern, Northwestern. upset happens over wow. UCLA. Boo-booey. Over UCLA. Boo-booey. Boo-booey. And company, I think UCLA is down a big piece. And that Arizona game, 
the way they lost control of it made me think that, you know, it's maybe just the timing of injuries matters a lot, right? Like yeah. if it happens a month ago, it's a lot different than it happening a week ago. And I think UCLA is in a tough spot. Um, Gonzaga, I mean, sorry, can you kind of advanced over Kansas right there. I like Jalen Wilson, what they've done. I think you kind is just going to go on a run here. Gonzaga beats Northwestern. And then it's just that we forget how much NBA talent Mark Few has had over the last uh, five to seven years, right? And this team doesn't have that. Uh, give me UConn, Jordan Hawkins and company, Adama Sadogo, like UConn advances to the final four. I'll go Kansas over Howard. I'll go Arkansas over Illinois. Uh, just Illinois is just incredibly inconsistent. They, you know, they've, yeah. like you like you kind of alluded to, I mean, they seem to have had chemistry issues and, and Underwood has publicly kind of not <laughs> been unhappy with his players. Yeah. I mean, it's like press conferences where he's just like making noises and I don't know. Yeah. Weird season, weird season. Uh, I'll go VCU over St. Mary's. That's going to be a grind half court game, but I think VCU has the length, they have the athleticism in the backcourt uh, to stifle Aiden Mahaney and Logan Johnson and, and get the 12 over five there. I'll go yeah. UConn over Iona. Um, you know, I know there's Rick Pitino is incredible, but Iona has had, they, they have not looked great um, against really good teams this season. So I'll go UConn yeah. there. I'll go TCU, TCU over, I'll say Arizona State, uh, but it doesn't really matter. I'll go Gonzaga over Grand Canyon. Um, I'm not entirely on the Northwestern bandwagon with you, but I'll take them over Boise State. Uh, and then I'll take UCLA over UNC Asheville. Now, the question with UCLA, will Adam Bona be back? Uh, That's or a good question. Bona be back, um, you know, hurt in the Pac-12 tournament. And, you know, his status seems to be up in the air. Uh, well, obviously less up in the air than Jalen Clark, who's out for the season, but uh, we'll see if he's back for that one. I'll go Kansas over Arkansas. Um, I don't I don't think Arkansas has the shooting nor the post players to kind of take advantage of where Kansas struggles. Uh, I'll go UConn over VCU. And then this, I'll go TCU. Um, I've liked them for a couple of months now. Wow. Um, if they can get if they can get out in transition, if if Mike Miles and and, the, and Damian Ball can kind of hassle the Gonzaga guards, which you know, Nolan Hickman's been a little bit inconsistent this year, and, and Hunter Salas has been inconsistent this year. And so I'm going to go TCU there. Hopefully they can get out in transition because I don't, I don't think they want to make that a half-court game. Uh, and then I'll take UCLA over Northwestern. I will go UConn over Kansas. I just think that Can Kansas is small for one, so I think Sonogo will have um, his way inside. I think they'll be able to crash the glass. And then I think Jordan Hawkins, I mean, they're going to have to double Sonogo, which is going to create open shots for Jordan Hawkins or – Alex Caravan, somebody like that. So I think UConn will make enough shots to get that done. Then I'm going to go UCLA over TCU. I, you know, TCU thrives off forcing turnovers, getting out in the fast break. Tiger Campbell, regardless of who else is on the floor for UCLA, Tiger Campbell is not going to turn the ball over. Um, no. You know, he's one of, the, one of the most heavy, level-headed players in the country. Um, and so I think they're going to be TCU. And then in the Elite Eight, I'm going UConn. I got, I got UConn in the Final Four. Right, I'm, I'm right there along with you. Um, they seem to be a, along the – closer to the team that we saw in November that was just running rough shot over whoever played uh, played them. So I, I just – I like the way UConn is built this season, so I have them in the Final Four. All right. Now it comes down yeah. to who we're picking. This is either going to be, you know, an amazing Final Four that I just picked or I'm going to look like an idiot <laughs> in about uh, – in like 72 hours or whatever, right? Um, which which of these four? Hold on. Which of these four teams are you most worried about losing in the first round? Maybe all of them. I mean, I I think I think <laughs> that's probably, definitely what the viewers want to see. That no, you're not even confident no, that any of these teams are going to no, end no, in the no. first round. <laughs> no, Duke probably Duke. Just just youth, you know. Um, but I think they all will be okay. Uh, they're they're all all four teams I pick are coming into this tournament with a level of confidence that I don't think they had a month ago. And I think yeah. that's why they were all why, – why I'm so big on them. Like, you lose Fremantle if you're Xavier. Okay, it's going to destroy everything, right? No, Jerome Hunter stepped in. It's still been really good. Colby Jones has stepped up. Okay, UConn, all right. You're not Marquette. You didn't win the biggest championship, but still playing really good basketball. Duke winning the ACC tournament. Arizona winning the Pac-12. Like, so I think this is a momentum tournament more than it is the best team in America because I don't think we have any great teams that are going to overwhelm anybody, Jeff. I would, I do think Alabama has the highest ceiling. Like when Alabama's hitting shots, I think yeah. that their level is above everyone. But I mean, this is a team that also went to overtime with South Carolina like three weeks ago. So yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I'm kind of with you that there's no <laughs> clearly dominant team. Uh, the South Carolina, which also beat Kentucky, right? Uh, so oh, yeah. uh, 
Arizona, Duke. I'm going to pick Arizona. I just think Tommy Lloyd and his experience uh, matters a lot in these moments. Um, and, and I think it's amazing that they just – he said they were going to play the same style, same pace after losing all that NBA talent, and that's what they've done. And they can overwhelm yep. you. Um, UConn Xavier, we've seen this many times before. Give me UConn. I just think they have a really high ceiling. Um, and I think they just have a ton of momentum. And Arizona, UConn, give me UConn to win the national championship over wow. Arizona. Wow. Uh, the Huskies, Danny Hurley. Wow. That's what we're that's what we're doing. I will go Alabama over Marquette. Um, I just again, I just I just like the way Alabama's has kind of turned it around at the end of the the regular season. I'm going to go Houston over UConn. I just think by at that point, Sasser will be a hundred percent. They're playing in their home city. Um, and I, I'm setting up what I think have been the two best teams since the start of the year. Most consistent. It's a rematch of a game. We saw, I think in December 10th and uh, Alabama won that one on Houston's home floor. I think they're going to repeat that. It's not on their home floor, but I'm going to go Alabama over Houston in the title game. This is wow. chalkier than yours, which I did not expect after your first <laughs> region. But, um, yeah, I mean, Alabama, I just think they have everything. They have the elite lottery talent in Brandon Miller. They have guards in the backcourt that can get their own shots in Javon Quinterly and Mark Sears. They have a, a X-Factor type guy in Noah Clowney, who's probably going to end up being a first-round pick when, when, all, when all is said and done. Uh, 6'10 guys step out and make threes. And they have Bidiaco at the, at the post who can block shots. He can rebound. They have depth. They play fast. They can really defend. Um I just think they have all the ingredients to win the national championship. I think Houston's an incredible team. They're going to be playing at home, but I'm just going to go with Alabama. I think they've been the best team in the country for pretty much the last four months. Who's your MLP? Oh, Brandon Miller. Wow. I- interesting yeah. story for college basketball, but I think he's, I mean, he's going to be the guy. If Alabama, if, if he struggles, Alabama's not winning any. Um, and so I think that, you know, when he plays well, uh, Alabama plays well, and, and I think they're going to win it all with him leading the way. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.